Um, we're going to kick this off so we can try to keep the timeline somewhat intact. I'll try to not to blow everybody's eardrums out by moving around too much. Um, real quick, just a in quick intro. I'll introduce myself. Uh, Jason Fernandez. I may, I don't, I'm going to stay right here in this, in this box right here. Uh, Jason Fernandez, 14, almost 14 year affiliate owner. Um, been working on seminar staff for almost 10 years, coming up on uh, 10 years doing that job. One of the best jobs on planet Earth. Uh, and then also do some podcasting, uh, affiliate development, coach development on the side, best hour of their day. Uh, lots of free resources there if you want to check it out. Um, and full disclosure, I would love to be nowhere else than right here with all of you, with my people, talking CrossFit and affiliate stuff. So this is, makes me happier than you could possibly imagine. Um, yeah. <clears throat> that being said, when I got the agenda and I realized I was talking after Nicole, I was like, shit. You don't want to follow Nicole. Uh, however, I've seen her talk many times, and every time I see her talk, I basically want to go like fight crime afterwards. So if anybody's in, we're going to go do that afterwards. Um, um, but no, so kind of what I want to do today is uh, talk about a couple of things. But really, I want to talk about the affiliate, the box, right? What you guys are here for, why you guys started, all of that, so we can deep dive into kind of really thinking about how do we answer the questions you guys have. How do we improve this? How do we make it better? If you've had an affiliate for one to five years, go ahead and raise your hand. If you're like five to seven years, raise your hand. Seven to 10, hell yeah. 10 to 15, that's OG right there. Who's over 15? Got some OGs in there in the back, just looking salty like you should after you do 50s for 15 years, yeah. <laughs> If you guys want to know, just go talk to him after, is it? <laughs> so, yeah, I want to talk about that. And um, here's what I kind of want to express. You know, and Nicole brought it up when she was talking. She said, this, you know, it's confusing times for a lot of different reasons. And part of my whole kind of purpose when I get up every morning is, is not only for you guys, but for myself, is to, I want to make this whole thing about affiliate ownership less confusing. Not only do I want to make it less confusing, I want to make it crystal clear. I want to make it so clear that you remember it the same way that you remember sitting in your level one. Right? How many of you had an aha moment about fitness when you sat down for your level one the first time? Full extension of the elbow, we're going to talk about this. Okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I, do, I remember. I remember it vividly, you know, listening to the, fit, the What is Fitness lecture and thinking like, oh shit, I get it. Like this changes everything. And I didn't have that moment when I opened my affiliate in like 2009, okay? So again, I'll ask you another question. How many of you guys are pretty confident you know how to make people fit? Yeah, it turns out the uh, solution to that is constantly varied functional movements executed at high intensity, okay? How many of you have that same level of confidence with regard to running your affiliate? Yeah, we've got like some shy hands, like the old, like, uh, maybe, I'm not really sure if I'm going to ask me a question. Um, and that's really what we need to do, right? We, we want to unpack that. And here's what I will tell you. Jordan brought it up, the articles, CrossFit, the level one trainer guide. I've had the distinct privilege of wearing the red shirt for the last 10 years, traveling around the world. And I, I believe this to be true. I think that the level one trainer guide might be one of the more seminal pieces of content written in our generation. The things that you will find by going back into reading that content will never cease to amaze you. Okay? So if I could urge you to do nothing else, continue to revisit that over and over and over and over. Okay? The answers are in there, some of which I'm going to extract from the level one, and we're going to talk a little bit about the affiliate. Okay? Because that's what I know. Right? At Best Hour, that's what we do. We work with CrossFit affiliates. Don't do micro gems. I don't even know what that means. We do CrossFit affiliates, boxes. That is our bread and butter. That's what we believe in, and that's what we will take to our graves. Okay. So I was thinking about this the other day. We're trying to think about how we can make this better and how we can improve it. I was like, well, what's the affiliate? And I realized I was like, oh, I don't really have an answer for that. So when somebody asks you guys, kind of like in the What is CrossFit lecture, if we go in the Wayback Machine, you're like, what's CrossFit? And you're like, oh shit, that's a loaded question, man. Like, how much time do you have? Okay. So you tell me, what is the affiliate? We're, we're, all here, we're all here to talk about it. What is it? Yeah, the environment you create. I heard lifeboat. 
Anybody else got anything else? Playground. What was that? Playground. Playground. I love it. What else? No wrong answers here, by the way. Home. Home? home love it. Yeah, it is my home. How many of you, anybody lived in your gym at some point? <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Definitely slept overnight there many times. So we could definitely call it home. Yeah. Okay. Might be some tax write-offs for that. Okay. What else? A business. A business. Cool. And I, I think we're kind of getting to the heart of a little bit of the problem here, which is like, if we're going to talk about improving this thing, we have to have something that would resemble a working definition so that we could figure out how to make it work, right? So this is not perfect, but I'll give you my working definition, okay? Centers for Health aimed at providing maximum impact for all stakeholders, the team, the owner, and the community, okay? Now, is it perfect? No, but it does cover the what, the who, and the how. And when I say Centers for Health, we're not making up new definitions. We're going, to, we're going to use CrossFit's definition for health. Anybody want to give that one a shot? Ooh, I love it. Fitness over time. He went with the easy answer, right? right. Work capacity across broad time and modal domains throughout your life. Okay. So let's talk about that. Right? If we know what it is, let's talk about how we can start to improve it. And I think some of it requires a little bit of a, a, a shift or reframing on how we look at the affiliate. Because I would argue that anybody who sat for the level one or the level two or the level three is armed with so much information about creating health and fitness, it's mind-blowing. Okay. Anybody here studying for the level three? You got that coming up? Nice. Good. Do that. Okay. So... If you are studying for that, there's going to be a little bit of built-in kind of uh, review session on, that, on some of that content. Um, anybody, anybody register for the level four? Yeah. Nothing I'm going to do in here is going to help you with level four. Yeah. Okay. All right. So if we think about the affiliate and we think about the, when Coach Glassman wrote the What is Fitness article, he outlined a theoretical hierarchy for the development of an athlete. Anybody remember that? Okay. And it was just a simple triangle. And then what was at the base of the triangle? Nutrition. Yeah, nutrition. <laughs> Above that? Metcon. Metcon. You guys, we'll do a group session now. What comes after that? Gymnastics. Gymnastics. What's above that? Weightlifting, Weightlifting and? Throwing. throwing. And at the top, what do we have? Sport. Sport. And typically in the level one environment, we'd say, you know, not many of us are going to pay our mortgage by exercising fast. So let's change sport to like the best version of you. Okay, and fundamentally the idea here is I can't really get to this pinnacle without addressing this in the right order. And if I use that same concept with regard to how I design the affiliate, I can repurpose that. And if I think about nutrition, both quantity and quality matter, okay, pretty simple, sales. Above that, Metcon, the boring stuff nobody wants to do. <laughs> Operations. Okay. Above that, gymnastics, the stuff that everybody like, thinks is cool but actually hates doing. Marketing. Above that, we've got weightlifting. This is your service. I like to, call, I like to equate weightlifting and service because everybody thinks they're good at weightlifting, but nobody's really that good at it, right? <laughs> Same thing with service. And at the top, here's, what, here's the important part. Impact. That's at the top of the pyramid. And I found this out recently, kind of serendipitous, but that font for CrossFit is impact. I don't know if it's an accident, but I think it's cool. Okay. Now, when we're talking about impact, what does that mean? Who are we talking about? What are we trying to do? What's impact mean to you as an affiliate owner or a coach or an athlete? Positively influencing somebody's life. I agree. I can think of no greater endeavor as a human being to try to, than to try to improve another human being. Okay. What else? Scaling it so that you're impacting your community. Yeah, scaling it. So making, making the funnel wider, if you will. Like, how do I get to more people? What else? Empowering people to? Make their own better life choices. Yeah, make better life choices. Okay. 
So this is, a, this is an important distinction, right? So when I'm talking about impact, it's important to go back to kind of like that working definition, impacting primarily the three stakeholders, right? The team, your coaches, we had questions here about like, how do I get full-time coaches? How do I make that happen? Right, the owner, you, which oddly enough, CrossFit is the most benevolent kind of group of people I've ever been around, but it's also full of a huge number of martyrs with regard to business ownerships who are just like, I'm not in this for the money, okay? Listen, you don't have to be in it for the money, but understand that money will help you get to the impact that you're looking for, okay? I've never known an, uh, a CrossFit affiliate owner to become successful and then turn into an asshole. I haven't. They only become more generous the more successful that they get. If you find the most successful box owners in the space, they're the most giving people that you will find. Okay? So if you, if you think about that, let that be some of your guiding tenets. It's like, hey, the more successful I get, the more people I get to reach, the more positive impact I get to have. And the reason this topic is so important is because we all know how profound CrossFit is. It's the secret sauce, right? You're all sitting here because you had some sort of life-changing event with regard to CrossFit. I know I did. Completely changed the trajectory of my life. And now I'm here standing talking to you. Okay. So don't leave yourselves out. We have a saying, better me, better everybody. Okay. And that has to be a little bit of a, a, a mindset shift or reframing with regard to affiliate owner. If you want to have a great staff, if you want to have a great community, you need to make sure that you take care of yourself. And that means I might need to look in the mirror, I might need to get some help, I might need to ask more questions, I might need to go back to the drawing board and start things over again. Okay. But what I need to understand about those three stakeholders is whatever you're doing inside of the development of your affiliate, I need to take all three of those into account. Okay. At any point when those become out of balance and one of them is getting overserved versus the other, the business will start to struggle. If the members are super happy, but the coaches are overworked and the, and the gym owners work in three jobs, that business will start to suffer. If the coaching staff is just there and they don't really want to do that much, they just like the exchange of free membership, that whole thing is going to start to struggle. Okay. If the business owner is crushing it and you're under-delivering on the floor for fulfillment, that business is going to struggle. Okay. So that becomes how we start to look at things. How do I keep them all in balance? Right? How do I make all the stakeholders happy? How do I provide the best possible service and product when I step out onto the floor and we say three, two, one, go? How do I create the best possible career path for my coaches? And how do I make sure that that still serves me simultaneously so that I can continue to invest in those people? Because it just becomes what I describe as a self-licking ice cream cone. It just keeps going. Okay. So if I know who I'm trying to impact, well, okay, now I have questions. Cool, that's what I want to do. I want everybody to be happy. What we like to call win, win, win. Everybody wins. There's no losers in the equation. How do I start to evaluate the business to start to figure out, okay, what should I start improving first? Okay. Some of you guys have seen some of these concepts. Some of you haven't. But if I think about... <clears throat> Kind of that Venn diagram when we think about fitness, just the three overlapping circles. Again, the concept here is you could put any three sports in there, it doesn't matter. But this overlapping space here, that's fitness. And again, using the same concept there, let's just use some business components here. Let's go sales. Ops and marketing, that overlapping area there is the affiliate. And the goal is to create as much overlap as humanly possible. Okay. The other unique thing about this is, raise your hand, if you can quickly look at that Venn diagram, sales operations and marketing, and establish both a strength and a weakness. Raise your hand. Okay. Everybody else is just crushing it. They're like, nope, I'm good. Right? And that's part of the process. How, do, how can I quickly use what I already know with regard to fitness and repurpose it to so be like, hey, where should I be spending my time and effort? Okay. What am I bad at? Let me fix that. And further than that, 
if I broaden this out and I put this into a larger circle, I can't leave out the other half of that. Because what I'll tell you is this sales operation and marketing, this is broadly what we describe as kind of the business aspect. Is that fair? Yeah, it's the business. Okay. What we all leave out in many instances, going back to that pyramid, is the service. And here's what I'm here to tell you. A lot of the questions that we have, a lot of struggles you have, are due to under-delivering right here. It is 50% of the equation. 50. It's what people come into the box for. And you can do all the work over here you want, and it is important. You should get it dialed in. You need to understand it. You need to do your homework. You need to become competent in those three things. And then what, then what I'm gonna tell you is, if your service is not what it should be, it doesn't matter. You might make a little bit of money right now, but eventually that is going to fall apart. So what do I mean by service? What I'm referring to, just so they're all on the same page, is that time between zero and 60 when people walk into your gym. It is your number one retention tool. Nicole brought up why people leave CrossFit gyms. I've been around a while, I've not been around as long as most, some people, but I will tell you this. Most people don't leave a CrossFit gym because they had a bad experience. It does happen. Most people don't leave for that reason. They leave because they become indifferent to it. They don't love going into the affiliate. That's why they leave. They leave because we're under delivering on the service. And I'll tell you why, right? And it's, it's, I've been thinking about this a lot, and I'll tell you why. Because CrossFit is so effective, it's so potent, it's so sticky, that it's a double-edged sword. Meaning that even when done poorly, executed poorly as a professional coach, it's still effective. And we get lured into a false sense of security thinking that we're doing a good enough job here delivering? And the answer is, it could be better. I don't care what your credential is. I don't care if you're level four. It can be better. And this is what we cannot forget. This is the bread and butter of everything that we do. Yeah, you need to get the other stuff shored up, but if you're not driving really, really hard for you and your coaching staff and everybody that com comes in contact with your specific affiliate to provide them the best possible experience every time they step on the floor, starting at the whiteboard, working through that whole class, I'm gonna tell you, that's where you should start. That's why people stay. They stay because they cannot wait to go back to class. That's why they stay. We need to get better at that. And I think collectively, as coaches, as affiliate owners, I think we need to be a little bit more candid about that conversation. Because if I asked all of you, I think the, I think, I think the number was 198, be like, what distinguishes your affiliate from anybody else's? I'm only gonna get one answer. We have the best coaches in the best community, <laughs> right? I would challenge you on that. And I'm not here to throw rocks at you, right? I'm here to have a real conversation. I would challenge you on that, right? And I would challenge you in this sense. If you struggle raising prices, if you struggle enforcing policies, you don't have the best community, okay? If you would get really freaked out if CrossFit were to implement anything that would assemble or, or, or resemble some sort of quality assurance because Nicole Carroll or somebody's gonna come in and evaluate your class, you don't have the best coaches. And I think it's okay to have that conversation. Why? Because now we can fix it. And this is why I'm so stoked that the level four is online because I agree with some of the speakers that are some of the things that came up earlier. I think some people just don't know. I don't think they know what really, really good coaching looks like. That's okay, right? That's what the level one, two, three, and four are for. You get in there, you see it. Raise your hand if you've ever walked into either another affiliate or you saw somebody in a red shirt coaching a class and you're like, damn, that's good. Yeah, 
And before that, you were like, oh, I'm doing okay. And then you watch them, you're like, I am awful. <laughs> I, am ter I am actually not good at this, and it, it actually is shocking that people pay me money for this. <laughs> right. Okay? And again, that's okay. Because if we have a candid conversation and we can be open to the feedback, we can start to fix the problem. Right? But it comes back to this. I need to understand how all of this works. I need to understand that, like, yes, we need to get our businesses in order. We, in fact, own businesses. We have to get that stuff shored up. But it cannot be at the expense of being like, no, no, our, our coaches are good. They're good. Right. I have three red shirts that coach in my gym on seminar staff. You're never going to hear me saying we have better coaches than anybody else. Why? Because we can all get better. My name is Jason Fernandez, and I'm a CrossFit affiliate owner. Tell me about the salt shaker. The salt shaker analogy is something that Boz presented to all of us on training staff several years ago. Imagine a table, and at the center of that table, there's a salt shaker. And that salt shaker represents your beliefs and your values. And at some point, somebody's going to come along for reasons unbeknownst to you, and they will challenge those beliefs. And the challenge that he presented to us, what we were charged with, was to defend those beliefs. And those are known as salt shaker moments. And we all have salt shaker moments in our lives. We have them outside of the gym, we have them as athletes, we have them as coaches, we have them as affiliate owners. And it can be tough, because when somebody comes along and they challenge your beliefs, you have to stand your ground. And those challenges could be, hey, you can't make money running a CrossFit gym. You need to have this program or that program in order to make it work. It could be, people can't get results in a group setting. You can't create careers for people. And the reality is, those are all distractions. They're distractions from what we know will get us to the goal. And that's the unreasonable pursuit of virtuosity. A level of virtuosity that permeates the affiliate. Every barbell, every plate, every pull-up bar, every athlete, every coach, every interaction that we have as affiliate owners with every single person because we know CrossFit works. People all over the globe walk into affiliates and have profound life changes. In order to keep doing that, we have to hold the line. We have to keep steadfast in our beliefs. And we have to not let people move the salt shaker because it's exactly where it's supposed to be. Now, if I'm talking about service, and I'm referring to like that being your number one retention tool, let's have a conversation about retention. Again, I probably think about this way too much, more than is reasonable. Okay. If I think about constantly varied functional movements executed at high intensity, when we're thinking about that phrase, the definition of CrossFit, which piece of that is the one that drives results? Anybody remember? Intensity. Intensity, okay? Now, you, you need the other two pieces. I need the constantly varied. I need the functional movements for obvious reasons. But at the end of the day, what we say is intensity, intensity is the independent variable most commonly associated with maximizing the rate of return on favorable, favorable adaptation. Simply stated, results. Okay? Getting people what they came for. Okay. So when I'm talking about retention, I'm talking about results. You have to deliver. Simple, not necessarily easy, because I need to reframe how I think about that. And I want to talk about retention in a couple different ways. I want to talk about it kind of descriptively, but let's define it too, because I think that's important. It's part of the CrossFit culture. Let's define our terms. So if I'm thinking about retention, okay, retention isn't like a thing. 
at least, in, at least the way I understand it. Okay. it. It would be a series of things done consistently and consistently well that would provide value to the end consumer. And that could be a lot of different things. Right? But at the end of the day, regardless of who comes into your gym, they need to get what they find valuable. Okay. That's what it is. Okay. So let's talk a little, let's get nerdy here for a second. We're going to use a couple different terms. ACV, does anybody know what that means? Average client value. Okay, if you're not familiar with that, what that is, the easy way to figure this out, take your total revenue, whatever you brought in last month, divide it by the number of members that you have on active profiles and Zen Planner or Wattify or whatever, it's gonna spit out a number, that's your ACV, average client value. Okay. Leg, does anybody know what that is? Length of engagement, how long they interact with the business, for what duration? Okay. Anybody have somebody who's been at the affiliate more than 10 years? Anybody had somebody that came in and left after 60 days? Yeah, everybody raise your hand. We're all guilty, okay? Understanding the difference between those two, if I can figure out why that's the case, then I can start to reform out how I do everything. No acronym for this one, but let's just call it Attendance. Probably the number one correlate to retention, how often they show up each month. How many of you track this religiously? Meaning if I asked you right now, you could tell me the number. Ooh, yeah, that was quick, yeah. You're like, oh shit, you didn't define it right. Okay, yeah, that's important. We need to know what that is. This starts to tell us the things that we wanna know but might not want to know. If they're not showing up at a high frequency, guess what? And I know somebody's sitting there, well, they're busy, they have a job. And I'm like, wrong. Okay. They're not gonna get results, and they're gonna leave. Okay. And then lastly, TTV. Does anybody know what that is? This is an interesting one. Time to value. This is kind of the old joke that we used to give in level one about the pull-up program. Like, who here would want 50 unbroken pull-ups? Raise your hand. Nobody? Are you sure you're CrossFitters? Yeah. Who here would want 50 unbroken pull-ups? Okay, what if I told you it's gonna take 30 years? Yeah, not good time to value, okay? But if I was like, yo, let's get that and we'll get it in six months, who's signing up for that? 50 unbroken pull-ups. Yeah, time to value. I need to understand what that means. And what I would tell you, if you use all of these metrics, ACV times leg times attendance and divided by time to value, that becomes your retention number, okay? And this is no different than the power equation, right? So if I think about that power equation, I've got force times distance over time equals average power. If any of those metrics start to move in the wrong direction, my power output will bottom out. And it's no different here. You can do the math on this. Anybody got a phone on you? Pull, somebody pull up your, um, your ca uh, calculator function on your phone real quick. Raise your hand if you got that for me. Cool, right here. Okay, so ACV, let's use kind of like industry average, if you will. We'll just pull a number out of thin air. $150, is that fair? Okay, length of engagement. Let's go 14 months. They interact and they are an active member for 14 months. Attendance, let's say that they're there on average 13 times per month each across all of your clients. Okay. Time to value, and this is the fun one, one month. Okay, what's that equal? 150 times what I say 14 times 13? 27,300. 27, okay. Let's do it differently. You still with me? Good. She's on it. ACV, let's call it 115. Length of engagement, six months. Attendance, seven. Time to value, four. 1,207.5. Okay. The reason I like this is because it tells me a lot of things that I either don't do or don't want to know. And I can calculate it. 
right? And I don't want to get into the metrics and stoichiometry, nobody cares, right? But the point is when those things start to not align, I can start to figure out what the friction points are. The beauty about TTV, just like when we say average power is equal to intensity, and what's unique about intensity is that it is relative, TTV and what people find when they get results is also relative. And sometimes we forget that because we get so engrossed with fitness. Be like, they gotta get their push-ups. They gotta get a pull-up. They need to be able to do Fran faster. Okay, guess what, newsflash, have been doing this a long time? Most people don't give a shit. Most people, they're like, I just wanna avoid dad bod, get off meds, like play with my grandkids, and be able to do something that would resemble my younger self. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah. that's me by the way. <laughs> right, I'm talking about me. I am, I've gone full circle as an affiliate owner. I am now my ideal client. <laughs> yeah. It took 14 years, but I have gone full circle, and I am now the person that I am marketing to, okay? All right. That's all I want, right? It turns out that's what most people want. And we don't need to recreate the wheel with regard to how we deliver that recipe. It's just CrossFit, and the beauty is you can all do that however you want, okay? But I need to understand how the retention aspect of that works. Because if I simplify this, <clears throat> And I have my retention equation. I'll just simplify it. Retention equals results equals impact. If you want to have the impact across all three stakeholders, you need to get people results. If you get them results, they will stick around. If they stick around, you will be able to provide the impact across all the people that you want. Because just like intensity, what I will tell you is, and I have popped the hood on way too many gyms, retention is the independent variable most commonly associated with maximizing the rate of growth within your gym. Most people are like, I need more clients, and I'm like, I bet you don't. I bet you if you just kept the ones that were walking in your door currently, you would be just fine. How many of you have on average three people hit your website or just randomly walk into your gym thinking it was something else every single month? Yeah, right? Turns out just getting three people every month and keeping the ones that I have will get me to where I wanna go. Maybe not as fast as you like, but it'll get you there. And again, when we're talking about retention, most of the answers that you, to the questions that you're gonna be asked are like, provide a better service on the floor, be a better coach, demand more from your staff, continue their development over time as well as yours. That's why you're all sitting here, right? So we just have to be a little bit more honest and a little bit more humble about how we're running our affiliates. I'll tell you exactly the day that shifted for me. When I ate the biggest slice of humble pie ever. 2014, January 5th, I get a phone call at 7.35 in the morning. This is a vivid memory, okay? My mother-in-law is screaming into the phone. She's like, the baby's coming. Cool. Hop into my truck, zoom over to the hospital, walk in there. My wife is 25 weeks pregnant at this point. For those of you who don't know anything about babies, that's early, okay? Doctor looks at me. I remember vividly, very tiny lady. She looks at me and she goes, your wife's bleeding, we gotta deliver the baby. And I didn't say it, but I thought it in my mind. And I said, if she asks me to make a decision between these two, I'm gonna choose my wife. I didn't know any better at the time. We go through that birth, all that kind of stuff. The doctor's like, you're coming with me. They're going to take care of your wife. Got it. Cool. Pull out a one pound, 12 ounce baby, show it to me. And I sob uncontrollably. And I'm thinking to myself as I'm standing there having this weird out of, outer body experience to say, 
If I can get that wrong, what else do I think I know that I actually know nothing about? And it started a whole learning journey for me. Because I thought I was good at affiliate ownership. I thought I was a good coach. I thought I was good at a lot of stuff. Until that day. When I was like, oh, this is probably the one thing I should probably get right in my life. Got it wrong. Okay. And I tell you that story because I think you've all probably had something similar. And we need to think about that in the affiliate. We need to be a little bit more honest with ourselves. Hey, I could do this better. I don't know quite as much about this as I think I do. Okay. I need to ask for help. And understanding some of these concepts and making them simpler is really important. Right? And I think it's even more important that we use the tools that we already have at our disposal. CrossFit is the most effective fitness program on planet Earth. Is that fair? Yes, absolutely. I don't even think there's a close second. Okay. We have that. And we have most of the tools that we need to make our affiliates better. Because I've always found this incredibly perplexing. If it is the most effective fitness methodology out there, why do so many affiliates struggle? And it's not because it's intimidating. Okay. You can solve that problem, right? Because when we're talking about retention, I need to give those people the, the absolute best experience possible. I need to understand how to implement that over time. And when I'm talking about results, this is when we can transition into understanding, like, what do people want? So I'll pose the question to you. What do people want when they walk into your affiliate? Just to be better. They want to be better. What else? What do they value? Like think a little bit more, like it's gonna sound superficial, but think a little bit more superficially, right? Be like, let's leave the, let's assume like everybody wants to be better. Be like, I wanna be a better me, yes. Wanna lose weight, okay, what else? Yeah, everybody wants to look good naked. Like never ever has anybody been like, no, nah, I'm all good, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> crushing it, right? right? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you this, here's what we found, and these are what we describe as like PVBs. or what we describe as perceived value builders, all right? People that walk into the affiliate, by and large, value one or more of three things. They like training, they like the social aspect of it, or they just like stuff, right? What do I mean by stuff? They're like, you have air runners? Take my money, all right? Okay, right? You all know who they are in your affiliate, right? You've got that person who's just like, totally buttoned, in, buttoned up on the games. They're like, did you see the, uh, the quarterfinals? And I'm like, I have no idea what time of year it is, man. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> no, I did not watch quarterfinals, I didn't give a shit. Yeah. Yeah. You have the other people that are literally just there for the social aspect of them, like, when's the next social? I'm like, it was last night, you were there. <laughs> okay. And then, again, the other people that like the stuff. Okay. And if I can figure out how to systematically deliver on all three of those, I can provide them results. So if we're thinking about that equation for TTV, time to value, if I can figure out how to, how to deliver on what they find valuable as fast of, as possible, the likelihood for them sticking around goes up significantly, right? And how you onboard people matters. Okay? If I find out that, sorry, what's your name? Mike? If I find out Mike, he's in there, he's just like, he's in the competitor aspect and he joins, I'm like, yo, we're having a workshop next Saturday. After we did your onboarding, it looks like you got the old funky chicken overhead position. We could probably sort that out for you, All right? Just for the record, this is not a good overhead position. You guys are on the same page, internal, external, okay? And I invite him to that, and I can make what might seemingly be a mundane change on his position or his movements. Great, awesome. Somebody who's timid comes in. You're like, hey, I know this is scary. I'm gonna pair you up with John when you come into the next class. He's been here 15 years. You guys have the same profession, and I also want to invite you to the social that's happening in three weeks. Boom, done. Okay. I need to figure out what that is, I need to deliver. And here's why, because it's a foregone conclusion that if they show up, they're gonna get fit. Anybody have somebody that's been showing up for years on end and is just like, I'm worse off? <laughs> no, it's not a thing. Okay. If they showed up by accident and like literally paid no attention, and they just like made up their own rep schemes every single day. They would still get fit. 
So it's not about the program. It's about how I deliver the program. Making sure that they get what they want. Obviously results, but results where, right? How many have somebody walk into their gym and they're like, yo, I'm kind of dealing with some degree of depression. I just need some accountability. Yeah, I had some crazy conversations during COVID. The things that people told me within 30 seconds of meeting were wild. And if I'm like, oh, they need accountability? Cool, let me check in with this person in two weeks. Be like, hey, you've been in almost eight times this month. We do a raffle at the end of every single month, right? Keep coming in just like that and get you in that raffle and you might win a gift card. Boom, that's accountability. That's delivering on what they find valuable. All with the assumption that we're continuing to drive the needle on providing better coaching on the floor. Insert whatever scenario you want. Well, I've got this athlete, whatever. You know how you solve that? Better coaching. And this is uncomfortable. And it's okay. Right? I've got bigger classes. I'm going to class. Crap, cap classes. You know how you solve that? Better coaching. And if you don't think it can be done, I would just urge you, find somebody in the community who's doing it better. Thousands and thousands of affiliates all over the world. I promise you somebody's doing it better than you. Find that person, figure out how to do it better. You can solve those problems many different ways. And that's our kind of model. Do what you're doing, just do it better than you're currently doing it. Right? You probably don't need to do new stuff. You need to evaluate what you're currently doing and figure out how that could be better. Your classes, your onboarding, how you run your gym administratively, all of those things. It's not new stuff. Every time I work with an affiliate, they're like, I need this, this, and this. And I'm like, are you doing these things? Nope. Cool, let's start there. Right? Oh, you're not running your reports? Let's start there. You have no idea how, where your money's going? Let's start there. You've never run a coach's meeting? Let's start there. And I'm not going to poo-poo on all the other services. If you want to run PT, nutrition programs, good. It's the base of the pyramid. You should be talking about nutrition. But the primary thing you do is the group class. It's why all you're sitting here and why you started affiliates, by the way. You walked into a group class and you're like, this is awesome. Okay. Now, when I'm thinking about that, if I want to deliver on these PVBs or the results, and I need to think about how would I do that, right? How would I do that systematically? And what I would tell you is, Again, we'll go right back to the level one. Go back to the technique lecture. Hey, do you want me to move fast or you want me to move well? Yep. Sure do. Wait, what? Yeah, you heard me. Do both. Okay. If I think about power or output and then time, essentially got two options. Let's just say I'm gonna go from here to the back of the room. I can lay on my stomach and crawl over there. I can just walk. Okay. One of them is significantly more efficient and I'll still get there. The other one is gonna cost me a huge amount of energy. The difference in between those two is the technique you use. Inside of the affiliate, it's the strategy that you employ. Okay. That's the technique when you run a business. And all of you have done things out of order, at which point the power output required to get to the desired end state goes up dramatically and may not get there at all. Okay. What I mean by that is like, if you think you need more sales, but you don't have a firm grasp on retention, that's out of order. That is improper technique is gonna cost you a whole lot of energy to maybe not ever get to the desired outcome. Okay. I wanna go the efficient route. Right, how do I get here? That's your strategy. Order of operations. What do I address? When do I address? How do I address it? And again, what you'll find far more often than not is just revisiting the things you currently have in place. How do I communicate with my members? When do I communicate with my members? Do I have an individual training plan for my staff? No? Okay. Let's start there. Do I have a budget in place? Start there. 
And that's a strategy that we want you to think about. And this is stuff that we help people with all the time because most of the time it's actually a pretty simple lay of the land. We're gonna start with these core principles, we're gonna fix those. We'll get to the fancy stuff later. No different than training. Don't talk to me about triple extension if you squat with a tiny dancer stance like this. Okay, I don't wanna hear about it, right? None of that stuff matters if you have no idea where your feet should go in the air squat. And it's no different in the business. Right? Do the basics. Do them really, really, really well. And I agree with, again, Nicole, when she's talking about Nicole Christensen. You walk into certain gyms and you're like, oh, this is a different vibe. They do things differently here. And that's the culture or the community piece. And what, again, I'll tell you is, like, if you have a great culture, culture doesn't announce itself. Culture doesn't walk and be like, hey, we have great culture. We've got it. It's here. Right? That's not how it works. If you have great culture, you see it, you feel it, you taste it. It's just there. You know it when you look at it. You know it when you get inside of the circle. You're like, oh, they do things differently here. That's how you develop great community. And it starts with all of us. By looking at ourselves in the mirror, how can I make this better? How can I dive in and really, really provide a product, a service, and an organization that if it was put on display to the world via a journal article or something like that, you would be super proud of it. And it's hard. I'm not here to blow smoke at all. It's hard. Guess what? You're all uniquely gifted at dealing with hard shit. You're CrossFitters. Treat it the same way. When I'm talking about strategy, I want to do a little, like a very quick exercise. Let's say CrossFit is like, hey, we've got some awesome resource for you. Nicole Kara walks into your gym. She says, good news. I've got somebody that's going to help you run your gym. Right? In walks Austin Maliolo with his oddly long arms. Okay. Okay. That's what he does so well in deadlift workouts. Okay. Walks in. He's like, yo, I'm here to help. I'm going to take over. I'm going to run this joint. You already know the things that he's going to look at and start to change. Do you not? You're like, oh, I definitely would not like him to look at my marketing plan. Right? It's the hopper model. Right? If I put every aspect of your business into the hopper model, you're all thinking, like, it better not fucking pull out the budget. Please don't pull out the budget. Right? No. But like, I just want him to look at our Instagram handle. Right? Like, that's it. Right? That's where you should start. And that's what I'm going to challenge all of you to do. Right? And I could not agree with Nicole more. I want to see people do more, right? What action are you going to take when you leave here to fix your affiliate? Stop talking about it. Do something about it, right? What are you going to give up to move the needle? What are you going to learn? Who are you going to call? What question are you going to ask? What are you going to stop doing, right? How are you going to address that to move the needle to get what you want? Action. I want to follow up with you. Literally, I'm going to follow up with you. And, couple weeks and be like, what did you do? What did you stop doing? What did you fix? What did you address? All of it. In order to get where you want to go so that you can provide the impact that you want. Okay. I love this stuff. I love it just as much as you do. And I can tell you, for those of you that are struggling, it can be great. For those of you doing great, share your knowledge. Share it. Help somebody out. I was talking about Chris Smith. I don't know where he's at. He's rolling around here somewhere. I've never once turned somebody down to come to my gym, ever. Hey, can I come to your gym? Whenever you want. What day? Doesn't matter. I'll be there. Okay. Show up. Get outside of your bubble. Learn new things. Get uncomfortable. All right. Put yourself on the floor at somebody else's affiliate and take the statement, but they're not my athletes, and put it in your pocket. It doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter. If you're a really good coach, give me 10 random people and it won't matter. We're getting after it. If you're on the fence, you want a coaching call, set it up. If we wasted your time, I'll give you a $150 gift card to Rogue. Um, that's not really the point. Here's what I want you to know. This is all I think about. This is all I want. I want every single one of you to crush. Okay? I want you to be as successful as you want. I want you to have the affiliate that you dreamt of when you're like, I'm going to start an affiliate. How hard could it be? Right? I want you to have that one. Okay. And I just want you to know this, when you're getting up at 4.30 to coach the 5 a.m., when you're answering the emails, like, 
I'm cheering for you in the background. I'm like, I want you to win, okay? So if you need something, reach out. Here to help you. There's a ton of re free resources out there. And if it's not me, ask somebody. But take action when you leave here. Do something to move the affiliate in the right direction. I don't care what it is, but take action and move forward. Can we agree on that? Yes. Cool. Thank you guys for your time. I appreciate it. <laughs> affiliate owners. We know there's a lot of business advice out there from people who want to change who you are. Not us. We're the exact opposite. We eat, sleep, and breathe CrossFit. We know the success you can have by leaning into the CrossFit methodology and applying it to your business because we're affiliate owners who have proven it ourselves. Just like you learn how to squat and deadlift, we'll teach you how to run a successful operation that brings you fulfillment while changing lives. You can have the affiliate of your dreams. Reach out to us to schedule a call by clicking the link below. We look forward to working with you.